um, uh, senior strategist of Temples is joining me. Good morning, Juan, and thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, and thank you so much for having me. Uh, so, Juan, how do you explain this major drop of the DXY? Because only yesterday we did see it stable above the 94 mark. Well, you know, there is actually a bit of a simple explanation in that simple history. Um, uh, it seems to be, and, and this was actually uh, on reports yesterday, and I think it really uh, it spread throughout the world and throughout the trading world, was that, you know, in general, no matter what, U.S. presidential elections are a very exciting time. And uh, even though there's a lot of speculation on what may happen, usually the S&P uh, and other stock markets do actually go up. So it seems that yesterday, and, and, and you know, obviously with COVID-19 and, uh, and a lot of the a lot of the threats uh, to lock down again and shut down that may put the economic recovery uh, are really under threat. Uh, it seems like now there's been a bit of a turnaround on, on, May, on, on not only the sentiment, but also on things such as the fact that uh, oil producers are uh, not going to completely, uh, uh, you know, uh, get rid of the oil production cuts, which of course improve the oil markets. And, uh, and one thing that we saw was that the Australian, uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia overnight made a decision to cut rates to uh, make a very clear loose monetary policy position for, for, for Australia because it's a very interconnected economy that of course is seeing that the global recovery is suffering. But the Australian dollar went up by one and a half percent. And the reason for that is that we have a lot of risk on sentiment. And there seems to be just a general feeling that once we have a clear uh, and cut uh, decision on what, on, on what this election means for the United States, that the markets will continue to go up because of the Federal Reserve and because of the loose monetary policy tools that have been left there for the financial system to be OK and to make it through the winter and to overcome the COVID-19 pandemic. So I think in general, it's a positive feeling that goes along with the excitement that, that comes with this election. And I think in general, just a human feeling that, you know, it, it's something that we've been uh, looking forward to happen and it's finally here. Uh, and in general, markets are just ready to go one way or the other, but they're ready to go up primarily on the basis that the Fed and the loose monetary policy is there to help the corporate sector. In fact, um, the Fed is uh, the major market mover in the past few months, more than, um, you know, politics, at least this is what we've experienced so far. So what do you expect from the Federal Reserve after um, that? That's very, very important meeting. Why? Because it's the first one after the election. So it's going to be on Thursday instead of Wednesday. Uh, it's the way that we were used to see it the Fed on Wednesday. Well, what are your expectations since we didn't see this second um, stimulus package that was supposed to come from Congress? We didn't see it. Um, do, you, do you expect them to undertake additional measures? Well, and, and that's where the question is, what other additional measures and how much more can the Fed do? And of course, that's where Jerome Powell will, uh, the, the spotlight will be on him. Um, obviously, the next 48 hours will uh, will be uh, a tremendously focused on the number of votes and electoral uh, college and how that works. But ultimately, the, the markets and the financial system are really relying not so much on those electoral resources, but really on what the Fed will do. And if the Fed will continue its, its tone, uh, which, which was shared, of course, by the Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, which was, we need Congress to help us with legislation in order to have this whole pandemic uh, financial pain be eased off on the population, which is what I have made an argument for why the euro deserved to go up as high as it did, even though right now it's suffering a little bit. But the reason why it deserved it is because it had a rescue package in place. And even though the implementation of it has not been ideal, it is very important to have an, a, a, a very fiscal commitment, not only a loose monetary policy commitment, but a fiscal commitment and you are going to hear that. So I think in general, my, my expectations are it could go one way or the other. He could really make the dollar weaker by just by, by just saying, hey, you know, we're ready and committed to do anything that we can to throw everything but the chicken <laughs> and, the, and the kitchen sink at this and also asking for the fiscal help. So it is going to be a very important decision. But I think that tone and that chorus of asking for the fiscal uh, complement is going to happen. It's going to continue. So what are you looking at um, uh, nowadays? Certainly, it's, it's a major week for markets for all, all type of asset classes. So what are you looking at specifically when it comes to foreign exchange and what are you observing? 
Well, you know, I mean, at the moment, uh, there is a lot of things happening. Well, obviously, we just mentioned the Australian dollar as a global gauge of how, uh, you know, interconnected economies and, and those currencies, if they go up, it will be a sign of overall global health, which could, of course, in general mean a dollar weakness, which is the, the, the weakening trade that we see coming for the U.S. dollar no matter what in both the and, and really the long term, short, short term, there's going to be wilder swings. But we do see that uh, if, if Aussie and other commodity based currencies can move up, uh, that's going to be uh, weaker, obviously, for the dollar. You're going to have to watch for uh, Turkish lira, which, of course, we've mentioned on this show before, Turkish lira and, and Brazilian real. The, re the reason why I pair those two is because they have a uh, very strong intervention from the head of the state, uh, Erdogan and Bolsonaro, who want the, uh, their, their, their equivalent of, the, of their central banks to do exactly as they do. So we're going to have to watch uh, now that Turkey is dealing with also the situation with uh, Azerbaijan and having to deal with Russia and having to deal with Syria, if that currency is going to continue to deplete or if it's really an opportunity where it's hit a bottom and maybe foreign policy-wise, Erdogan and that central bank can impress. So TRL and BRL are currencies that I believe have a tremendous uh, volatility and, uh, and, and quite an opportunity to perhaps go up if things go their way. And of course, that's tied to a lot of geopolitical risk. And then we just have to watch uh, for, you know, in general, uh, purchasing power parity. Uh, you know, I, I do follow the Big Mac Index, uh, uh, which is, of course, usually by, uh, um, is brought up by The Economist, the publication out of the UK. The whole idea of purchasing power parity with the Big Mac Index is to make sure that we understand that, this, that the ingredients for a Big Mac are the same no matter what in anywhere in the world. So we're going to have to see if, if once again, we see that, it, you know, perhaps currencies in South America and the developing world after COVID-19 really crush them. If those currencies are going to go uh, go up and, and find some level of parity and value to, again, the, the currencies of the advanced world, so, such as, for example, the Swiss franc, which tends to be overvalued in the, in the big back index, because the Swiss franc is surrounded by Europe, and Europe right now and the wider region is suffering from the major threat of locking down individually in each nation, which is the exact same recipe for disaster, and that helped the dollar go up in March. So we need to watch out for a lot of things going on because it's not just elections. There's a lot of things moving. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. Thank you very much. Juan Perez, Senior Strategist at Temple. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you so much.